So you're okay with reporting? Cool. And uh, what did you want to, what uh, belief did you want to examine? If I, can I get you to come a little closer to the mic? Yes. Thank you. Um, and it's, you know, generally uh, something that's sort of important to you, something that, you know, shapes your, your decision making or what have you, as opposed to like, my favorite color is blue, which, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think automation is a is inevitable and it's a good thing as long as we can use it to help the people instead of um, instead of organ instead of massive corporations using it to require less on workers. And how convinced are you, like on a scale of one to a hundred, that uh, automation is good? Like ninety-five. Ninety-five. Okay. Um, so when you you're talking about uh, like, I mean, we have a degree of automation now. Um, are you talk? What are you talk? Are you talking about like the nobody having any of the jobs that they have now because everything's automated? Well, so we, I don't think we can stop automation, and I think uh, as long as uh, as long as we prepare for it, we can utilize it in a way that's beneficial to people instead of instead of taking away people's livelihoods because right now it's uh it's mainly just like car factories and uh, mass-produced products but soon it, it could be a lot more like a lot of desk work it can be automated uh and things like uh like truck drivers there are like a million truck drivers in the United States, and that can be in like in the next five years, or even in less time, we could probably we we can most likely automate almost all of those jobs away. And the um, transportation industry is one of the largest industries. Uh, and if we get auto, if we automate all those jobs away, there aren't going to be more of those. There aren't going to be enough jobs to to fill all those people. And and as long as it's cheaper than hiring. A, a, like someone in minimum wage here is like fifteen dollars an hour. If if there's automation, it's fifteen dollars an hour. Even if like a machine that costs ten cents an hour to run from a, like on electricity is going to be inherently better, no matter how worse it works. It only it just like you can have ten of them instead of one human. It's going to be more efficient and cheaper. And I don't think we can stop that. We're going to lose tons of jobs to it. But what do you think about? Uh, I mean, what what is the solution for the people who have lost their jobs? Uh, I think we need to to shift. I think we need to uh, shift the the ownership. The, I don't. I think that we need to. We need to do a better job in reducing the uh, in reducing the power of large corporations based on monetary, like this corporation there are tons of tons of corporations who do like horrible stuff for the sake of profit and like it like I mean you we can't stop that I mean, we can, regulation mitigates it. Uh, we might not be able to stop it, but uh, I mean, it, it could be stopped. But it, how does how does what you're saying address the livelihood and the well-being of people who lose lose their jobs to automation? As as long as we have like the notion that that there, as long as we think that there will be jobs and that there will be opportunity, that that means that. That's an excuse to to like like the the idea that you can work you can always work for money you can always find like there's always something to like climb up like we you, there isn't always something to climb up. so we need to like we need to spend more money on systems to help people and if we don't do that uh, then. The corporate, then, then there won't, there will be millions with 
who don't have anything and just living on the streets. Oh, there's more. Right. Uh, um, so I guess what I'm getting at is um, what, I mean, you say the systems, what systems, uh, if you're advocating for, you know, 95 per, or, you know, a large scale automation, you know, millions of people will lose their, their livelihoods. Like you cited truck drivers, there's many other, uh, you know, fast food workers, all those kinds of things uh, are in danger of losing their jobs to automation. And, um, you know, presumably it would be, uh, you know, these corporations that you mentioned who would be instituting the automation mm -hmm. and also, uh, you know, because it's more efficient, making a lot more money. Um, but then what about uh, the workers who had been previously fulfilling those uh, jobs that are now gone? Um, ideally, we would, we would have heavy taxation on those large corporations or every large corporation, and we, uh, and the, uh, the goal would be to, to guarantee uh, thing or every you you hopefully be able to guarantee food, water, electricity, and a home for everyone. That would, that would be the goal. Right. So if a, a corporation, you know, in its current um, iteration is is. Its primary function is to make money for its shareholders. Mm -hmm. So, if you and um, the development of technology to automate things is something that uh, you know we aspire or people aspire to, like create those things, and they're motivated by making money. And if they are then, um, you know, if then you know, say I don't know what percentage you're suggesting we tax them. But if say it's a you know a very high say it's 60, 70, 80 percent tax rate, why would they be motivated to then produce the technology to automate things? Um, I I don't want to just tax the corporations that are automating things. I want to tax all of the large corporations, like all all the all the corporations who all, like there's so many large corporations. That make so make that, and all of them don't really care as long as they're making profits. And you can see that like in a lot of different uh, different things going on, like Nestle trying to say that water isn't a human right and stuff stuff like that. And I and corporations are are inherently greedy, and I think we should. And I th and I don't think we should reward reward that greed. Do you think that the society? Uh, I mean, there, are the the things that corporations have produced. Um, you know, think in the last century. Do you think society has uh, you know benefited from those? Like I think about uh, you know cell phones, computers. Uh, you know, I mean, the mass availability of food, uh, you know, it used to be 90% of people were engaged in food production, and now something like 2% of people are engaged in food production. And that's the result of, uh, you know, corporations, um, you know, motivated to make money, you know, greed. Um, but it also has uh, the effect of, um, you know, allowing, you know, people who are poor today to enjoy luxuries that the most wealthy people a hundred years ago couldn't even dream of. Uh, to me, it like those developments were enabled by corporations only because there wasn't systems in place to, to provide those the people who wanted to to design those things. They weren't provided the material to design those things without a profit incentive. What do you mean provided? Well, like, if someone was like, if someone a hundred years ago was like, oh, I want to, I think I have a great idea, and I want to, and I want to see if I can make it work, the only way to really do that would be to go to a company and be like, and try to get, like, hired as, like, an inventor, or, like, or you, you can't, you don't have the time or the, or the resources to to design new technologies, unless you have money uh, 
unless you, unless you have money backing you up and keeping you uh, keeping you in a stable place, stable economic place while you make that. I mean, that's not. Uh... It's certainly not universally true. There are many people who had ideas and, uh, you know, tinkered away in their garages, came up with something, got a patent. Yeah, and there, there, there are always exceptions, but, but like cell phones, they weren't. I mean, Bill Gates started off uh, working in his garage poor. Um, and he look at it. He started working in his garage, but uh, he, he had, he had like, relatives and parents who who weren't like to report he had a safety net to fall back on he wasn't like starving he had like uh he had a safety net to come back to if, if like for some reason he, he completely collapsed and i think well co like i corporations have been the major driving force for innovation but i don't think we need to be i think we should have uh, I feel like innovation could be, I, f I feel like we could, if we can guarantee people uh, the necessities, like that, like a home, food, water, electricity, internet, we could, uh, we could ideally, ha like, these people could have, the re could get the resources they need from, like, the government, from the public, and they won't have to... Uh, use those in they don't have to like only to only make things that make more money well um so I'm, I'm a little bit i think we've gotten a little bit off off course uh and i'm not sure how this relates so much to automation being good um, um but um i wonder like what if if all things are are, are you know some high percentage of things are automated, what is, you know, um, what is the incentive for regular people to do anything except collect checks from, you know, the government or from, or to innovate anything? Um, like, I don't think I don't think that there needs to be money involved for people to be curious and inventive. I don't like I think people would would make and and discover new things just because they want just because they they're interested. So you think that you're you're suggesting that if. Uh everything that we need is automated it'll just uh, free people to um it'll free people to do what they want to do what they want okay and i feel like the people who are curious and uh curious about about how things work would it would still exist and they would still make new things do you, it seems like um you know a very large percentage of people in the United States enjoy more leisure time um, than most people have throughout history and most people do in the world in general. Yet um, we have, the. it seems though that as though the vast majority of those people with their leisure time are not really developing, uh, you know, they're not, they're playing video games. They're, um, you know, it's just isn't necessarily a bad thing, but they're not, uh, you know, uh, living their best life, so to speak. I mean, we have uh, incredibly high rates of, uh, you know, affluent people with depression and, uh, you know, various things of that nature, alcoholism, drug abuse. Um, so it maybe, is it possible that there are only a, a, a a certain number of people who are actually curious and uh, want to explore um, things so, like you're suggesting. You said that you said that there are certain amount, that like people who are like affluent, like often have yeah. like ha still aren't happy and still have problems. Or let's just let's not say affluent. Maybe that was the wrong word, but uh, you know, have their needs met. 
they're they have enough uh, money in life that they have leisure time so i think we as a society often conflate like yeah. money and happiness okay. right i think that is okay. and i don't and i think that <laughs> that um <laughs> that like that people need to be able to find their own happiness and i think it's incredibly difficult do you think that um you know, work is a source of happiness? I think it can be, I, but I don't think work is inherently a source of happiness. Right. I think, like, I think being able to, to create is a, is a source of happiness, but I don't, I don't think that, like, something like, like working a desk job like filing paperwork is going to be a sort of happiness for a lot of people and i think uh if we can if we can audit like if we can automate what what if we can automate most jobs people will go for what will do what makes them happy if they don't feel uh and if they don't if they don't feel like they need to do things that if they don't feel like they need to um to work like a job that makes them unhappy, they and they, they won't and they don't need to. They won't. Uh, and I, uh, and I don't. And I feel like a lot of people do work jobs that they don't want to do, in order to support themselves, so that they, they can find time to do the things that they actually want to do. Um, but I don't think that. And. Yeah. How do you how do you uh, resolve the so you're saying you that you resolve the conflict with um, I mean it, it seems like inevitably it would be a corporations who came up with the technology to automate um, everything mm -hmm. right um, and so um, yeah, it, but it seems like you have a big problem with corporations as, as well. How do you resolve that uh, apparent, what appears to be a contradiction? Is it only through taxes? I feel like, I don't, I don't like large corporate entities, um, as I've said. Uh, currently, there isn't really any good way to get rid of them. So do you, th do you feel like they're a necessary evil? No, I feel like they're an unnecessary evil. I feel Who's going to create, like, are you talking, we're talking on a nationwide or global scale, like automating uh, stuff means, uh, you know, a, that you can't have like, you know, everybody sort of individually automating stuff. Uh, you have to have um, a congruent systems that work with each other and that seems like it's it requires like massive corporations like you know Amazon or something has automated or in effect automated so so much of our lives already and you know Bezos is uh, you know one of the richest people as a result I feel that uh, those uh, the systems of automation shouldn't be owned by those people or it shouldn't be owned by any individual group of like any small group of people, I feel like uh, I feel like they should be owned by the public, and this uh, and I don't think our government is built in a way that would properly handle uh, this situation right now or hmm. this situation. So um, you, are you, you're talking about a a a total transformation of the. Uh, government and social structure? I feel like that would be necessary in order for, I feel like it would be necessary for the, for there to be a reconstruction of, uh, 